Try to forget the objects you have before you. A tree, a house, a field, or whatever. Instead, simply think, here is a little square of blue, here an oblong of pink, here a streak of yellow, and paint it just as it looks to you, the exact color and shape, until it presents your own impression of the scene before you. Paint what you really see, not what you think you ought to see. Landscape is really nice for me because I can take the motifs that I see and make them into something else. But ultimately, I don't want to be too conscious or controlling. So in that way, I'm um, challenging myself and like trying to get to a new image. Monet inherited that idea that the rapid way of painting was something that immediately could convey your response as well as being a means of recording effects that changed quickly. Impression Sunrise, the one that they named Impressionism after, that was most likely done on site and rather quickly. So you might have the idea that it is a sketch, a painting sketch, because of the way it's so loosely painted. And the Waterloo Bridge series is more labor intensive because he's trying to achieve the subtle gradations of hue. And in his work in series, the kinds of effects that he chose were more complicated. So he's painting fog. He's not painting things and he's painting light as it's reflected in the fog. And that's something that you can see in the painting of Waterloo Bridge. For me, landscape does not exist in its own right, since its appearance changes at every moment. But the surrounding atmosphere brings it to life, the air and the light. I find it interesting to know that as he evolved in his career, that he gradually abandoned the use of earth colors. Now, earth colors, they've been the workhorse colors for hundreds of years for making a painting. And here's an artist not using them at all. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Monet was staying at the elegant Savoy Hotel. He could look in one direction and see Waterloo Bridge, in the other and see Charing Cross Bridge. Monet would pull out a canvas from the canvases that he had stored in his hotel room and work on it as a particular effect of light lasted. So it would be as though every single thing that was happening would give a different look. And he wanted to have a canvas for every single look, every single different um, effect that, was, that he could see. And it, I mean, that happens when you're outside. I've never seen such changeable conditions. I had more than 15 canvases underway, going from one to the other and back again. I've never felt so physically and mentally exhausted. I imagine he was pretty frantic, you know? frantically doing this thing. Just imagine, I'm bringing back eight full crates. That's 80 canvases. Each of these paintings in the series is a little bit different from each other. You expect them to be, you know, prepared all the same. He might have given equal attention to each one, but no, it's not that way. He actually <laughs> gave a lot of attention to some, very little to others, and who knows why working hard on my paintings, which are giving me a lot of trouble. I can't send you a single London painting, since for this kind of work I need to be able to see them all, and quite honestly, none of them are completely finished. One day I'm satisfied, and the next day everything looks bad. And in the case of this Monet, the underpainting, um, because of its thickness and the interesting, almost crisscross 
left, right, left, right, short brush strokes in a methodical fashion, to me, implies he's trying to cover up something. And we did realize from using the infrared imaging that there's uh, some other smokestacks or vertical lines that are below somewhere. I'm not a great painter, neither am I a great poet. I only know that I do what I can to convey what I experience before nature. Most often, in order to succeed in conveying what I feel, I completely forget the most elementary rules of painting. In short, I let a good many mistakes show through when fixing my sensations. There's a quote by Paul Clay that art does not render the visible. It renders visible. And I think that that's an interesting way of thinking about the later work of Monet as making something visible that really isn't out there that he's using paint and he is showing us a place, a time, an effect of light, but it's not any one of those things. It's in some sense all of them and his way of putting it together in paint that makes it come to life for us and makes it something that we can have our own subjective experience of.